All right, we're back in the shop. It's the end of February. A few things have happened since we last saw you. Passed our electrical inspection. Two nice big power boxes all wired up and happy to go. That's 225 amp. That one's a 125 amp. But uh, yesterday, uh, had a team of framers in here to fix some structural issues with the ceiling. The roofer needs to come by and patch some leaks. It's a rubber bladder membrane roof, but there were parts of the ceiling that were just compromised to the point where if you were walking on the roof in the wrong spot, you might fall through. So had to address those for sure. And I wanted to do that before the roofer came to fix the leaks, but one of the biggest problems was this corner. This corner was sagging about four or five inches and um, causing water to pool uh, on the roof. And uh, it was also leaking in this corner. Uh, now that the structure has been fixed, I can get the roofer to patch the corner up on the roof. I'm not sure what it is, probably something minor. It's a really slow leak. This corner here had a similar problem, not quite as bad, got it patched. And then a select few other places we just had to um, put some plywood up and then cut some two by tens to support the plywood. Just places where the ceiling structure was falling in and the bladder was exposed. Ideally, if we had the money, you know, we'd pull the bladder off the entire roof, you know, fix all the wood from the top and then put a new bladder over top. But you know, that's a twenty, thirty thousand dollars $30,000 ordeal. And unfortunately the previous owners of this building put a new bladder roof over old wooden structure. Kind of forced me into the position I'm in because it's a shame to waste the good bladder, you know? So we did what we could by fixing it underneath. You can see here more of the patching. Just went through about a dozen two by tens and four sheets of three quarter inch plywood. Just tightening up a few spots. It's not very good looking, but you know, I'll, I'll paint it black or flame burn it or something, you know, just to make it go away. Because the plan is to still pressure wash this ceiling. Um, in this corner, I already started. You can see the difference. Not pressure washed, pressure washed. This one corner though, because of how intricate the ceiling design is, took me, you know, every bit of 45 minutes. So it is going to be a laborious task for sure. Today's plan, however, has a little bit more to do with the line shaft. The line shaft, as you may have seen, is still in this building. And for those th that don't know, the line shaft is how they would power old pieces of equipment. Uh, real quick overview of this one. I have some old footage that I'll put in of it running. Uh, that is a hundred year old Westinghouse electric motor, three phase. And it turned this big drive pulley, which turned this entire shaft. So basically this whole shaft would be spinning all day and various machines would be Power would come to the shaft, to a pulley, and then to a jack shaft, if that's what it's called. And then you see that stepped pulley there? That is how you would pick the speed of the machine. So a belt would run off of that pulley down to a machine on the ground. And you have four different options there for speeds. But also, if you see that bolt, there was a lever arm that was attached to that would, that would come down to ground level. And to turn the machine on, you slide that lever arm, it engages the clutch, and it actually gets this shaft spinning. You know, back in the, before the 20s, late 1800s, electric motors weren't quite as common and they were really expensive. So it made more sense to have a single electric motor in the shop and then just transfer power through this series of belts and pulleys to the different machines. Now sometime in the 20s and 30s, uh, machines, uh, electric motors started to become more common more affordable, and uh, people would start to convert their line shaft machines to machines that had dedicated motors, thus beginning the process of rendering this type of system obsolete. Now, when we got in this building about two years ago, this still, run, this still works right now, actually. If I put power to that motor, it still turns on, and the machines were still running. They were using line shaft machinery in this machine shop up until about five years ago. So I've kept a lot of things. I kept a radial drill press. I kept a six foot Hendy lathe. I've kept a few other line shaft pieces of equipment. And uh, I plan on putting at least one or two of them back in service. So I'd like to keep this line shaft working. Had an issue though, the plumber came in when he did the trench with his mini excavator and actually hit my line shaft. You can see it's bent there. 
Yeah, I think he hit that pulley. There's like a notch in the pulley. And you know, this is where the office is gonna be. So I was hoping to have this piece of the line shaft protrude into the office, maybe run a big slow moving fan off of it or something, you know, something cool. But uh, you know, now I'm sort of forced into, uh, you know, that thing is so bent that there's no way I can turn it on now until I cut this bent section out. So um, the nearest coupler is right there. Unfortunately, I think my dreams of having the line shaft spinning in the office are, uh, well, almost over. So I think today's goal is to get rid of this bent and damaged section of the line shaft and then um, a few other places in the ceiling where they have jack shafts and various things still hanging that are really just in the way of me pressure washing and cleaning the ceiling. So. Uh, I have my oxyacetylene torch with me today. I got the bottle spilled this morning at ARC 3. The plan is to cut out the damaged section and then sections that I know I won't um, bring back to life just based on where they are. And um, all these line shafts uh, are supported, the bearing brackets are supported by these massive C-channel pieces. They're probably a quarter inch thick. A lot of steel, a lot of steel hanging above that isn't necessary. So. We're going to use forklift, man lift, oxyacetylene torch, and uh, some clever rigging and get rid of some of this metal. Uh, so I'm, I'm caught in between being as courteous as I can be to this old, let's face it, uh, almost non-existent technology, which again, I will keep in this building and keep running, just not to the extent that it was. Uh, when we got this shop. So I'm going to make the functional section of the line shaft shorter and um, free up some ceiling space. So here we go. <laughs> blocks of wood um, rolling off the front or rolling off the back so I cut some little pieces of plywood and screwed them to these six by sixes so that the shaft can sit here and you know not roll forward or backwards um, just a little something I feel better now and there we go one probably 10 foot section of line shaft removed safely from the ceiling. Now you can see how these work. These are big cast iron A-frames and the bearings are sort of self-adjusting. They move in, in both axes, X and Y, to uh, adjust to the shaft. And they're really rudimentary bearings, probably I would imagine uh, bronze or Babbitt bearings. Uh, I have to, they're not roller bearings. That technology wasn't really invented yet or it might have been, but it was not common. But uh, I mean, look at these pulleys. This is a giant wooden pulley. This is a cast iron pulley and a tiny little pulley here and then another big wooden pulley. So if nothing else, this stuff is just cool art. You know, it could be part of an amazing light fixture, chandelier, uh, end table, that kind of thing. Or, like I said earlier, it could be used, again, in a line shaft shop. So, if you're looking for something like this, uh, drop me a line in the comments below and let's work out a deal. I'd love for it to go back in action before it becomes parts for another uh, project. So, let me know. But uh, onward and upward. Now, uh, I'm going to take down uh, this portion of C-channel that it was attached to and then wash, rinse, repeat around the shop. I got another small section here that I'd like to get rid of. And then, like I said, deal with the damage section up front. So lots to do, but making swift progress. This rig worked out great. The shaft sat right in between the pieces of plywood and I wasn't worried about it uh, rolling around. So clever rigging, always helpful. And the C 
heat channel is down. Feels, uh, feels pretty right cutting metal with an oxyacetylene torch in uh, a shop this old. Those that are pros with the oxyacetylene torch are probably laughing at my cuts, but uh, once you get the torch dialed in, it makes pretty quick work. It helps if you have a straight edge or a jig, you can make your cut nicer, but there's no real reason to make these cuts perfect just trying to get the metal out of the ceiling. So that's a few hundred pounds of C channel. And now we're gonna move on to this jack shaft. Uh, actually ran the radial drill press, sat right here. And the belt is twisted because they wanted it to rotate in the opposite direction of the main shaft. So one trick you could do is just flip the belt. It barely contacts with itself in the center, but you know that level of abrasion isn't that big of a deal. And then it would spin this shaft in the opposite direction. And then same deal, it has a four stage cone pulley off the back that you would correspond with the cone pulley on the back of the machine. This little guy is probably gonna be used again for the drill press. I'll probably put it over there if possible, uh, especially because the cone pulley is matched. You need to keep those together. Uh, but once this little guy is down, it's attached to these giant pieces of C-channel that can also come down. So yes, wash, rinse, and somewhat repeat. productive day. I've got a lot of C-channel and a lot of useless to me line shaft pulley equipment uh, out of the ceiling. I mean a lot of stuff. A metric ton probably of C-channel, uh, a big jack shaft, and then two smaller jack shafts. This one was for the radial drill press so I'll probably take that cone pulley off and put it on the jack shaft that's still in the ceiling. And this guy ran the uh, the brown and sharp horizontal milling machine up at the front of the building and I still have that machine as well so this cone pulley is relevant to that machine and all this stuff works because I've actually used it uh, when it was up and running so these two are still very functional probably not going to get rid of those this big guy over here isn't really useful to me and um, honestly the C channel I'm probably going to scrap because if I want to build an infrastructure similar to what was there in the future I can just use modern steel although you know many can argue that steel you get these days is not as good as steel you got back then anyway yeah the ceiling is becoming more clear uh, my little torch setup has been working great today and um, yeah having a scissor lift and forklift in here is paramount uh, it's nice problem to have these big tall ceilings so yeah, one step closer, onward and upward. See you next time.